Remember humanity. They were pretty great. Responsible for some of the greatest cultural achievements of the last century. High art. High culture. And the greatest book ever written. <laughs> but what happened to them all? Did a vast proportion of them die from some horrible illness? Judging by all the skeletons in the streets, yes. Definitely yes. And let's be frank, they had a pretty good thing going on. Thrills, spills, and all the lard they could shove down their fat gobs before they ran out. But what happened to them? Well, we can't know for sure. Did they all go off in a big spaceship to build a better world on Mars? Did they eat so much lard they literally combusted? Perhaps the author of the most powerful book ever written walked among the mortals and led them to a new utopia somewhere. So let's find out. Come with me, God, and learn what happened to humanity. We'll follow one particular filth blot on his journey through the post-fucked wasteland that the Earth became, and find the answer to all, if not some, of these questions. Let's meet Adam Watts, the cretin. Look, there he is now. I don't really remember the end of the world. See, at the time, I was sleeping on my girlfriend's, or actually ex-girlfriend's sofa. Each morning I'd be hoisted up by my ankles by an elaborate system of punches, push, witches and pulleys, and, and her dad would throw used Eno bags at my head and go on half price because he knew a guy. Let me tell you, it's not easy trying to sleep while somebody attaches you to a pulley system. I mean, I didn't mind because I figured if I hung around long enough then things would get better with me and Sarah. See, we hadn't really been talking. Not unless you count the chance of fuck Adam that her and her family came up with every time we left the house. It was also around that time that I realised that her dad was a journalist. I'd read the local newspaper and the headline would say something like Local ex-boyfriend is a terrible house guest and total shit all over the room. And I'd read the crossword and all the clues would be my name and all the answers would be bastard. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there was some actual stuff in there about the end of the world. Not that anybody paid any notice to it. Too busy throwing shit at me. Oh. <laughs> I'll say a lot about the end of the world. It was a great time to be in the used enema bag business. Anyway, recently I got a message from Sarah's mum saying that Sarah had gone out into the waste and was missing. I thought, hey, this is my time to shine. I can go find her and prove myself to her. See, the thing is, People are a lot like shoes. I mean, they're also not a lot like shoes, I guess. But the thing is, you can find them easy. Also, I'm fairly sure that people have laces. Anyway, I'm off to find my lovely shoe. I mean, Sarah. Sarah, I'm off to find my lovely Sarah. And bring her back to the colony where we live. And then maybe we can get back together. Because you see, the thing is, I'm not a bad guy. I just accidentally killed her dog one time. <laughs> People of Colony 67, I present to you those who have transgressed our laws, sinned against our glorious society, looked at me in a way I find irritating <laughs> and around. <laughs> Bring forth the prisoners! Prisoner 512, alias Johann Flick. You have been found guilty of genetic experimentation <coughs> so horrible that I dare not repeat it, lest it be replicated. I was just trying to grow some apples, some lovely green apples. Exactly. I mean, I don't know what apples are, but they sound terrible <laughs> and evil. That monster should be stopped! My ears are bleeding. I didn't vote for him. The mob has spoken. Now go stand over there and await your horrible, horrible fate. <laughs> <laughs> Prisoner 785, alias Andrew McAndrew. Yeah. You have been found guilty of illegal literacy. All I did was review your book. Exactly! <laughs> this review is terrible. The prose is inadequate. Can't swear. 
leaves of the book are unreadable. Huge es extracts of ex huge swathes are extracts from an air conditioning manual. Which huge extracts are extracts from an air conditioning manual. Silence. We shall let the people oh, decide. Don't delude yourself that any of these people can read. <laughs> what, sir? Why would it need conditioning? I'm really not well at all. <laughs> so it's settled then. <laughs> I really got need help. Bring forth the next prisoner. What did you do then? Piracy? Treason? Were you that bloke who got one of his balls out in the theatre? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I want to go out there. What? Yeah, no, listen, my girlfriend's missing and she's out there in the waist, so I need to go out there. You, you can't just get expelled without good reason. That would be silly. Please, is there anything you can do? I tell you what. I'll charge you with murder, and then you can get expelled. Oh, really? You do that for me? Hey, I'm a whimsical dictator. <laughs> if I can't find someone guilty with little, or in this case, no evidence, then what am I good for? Uh, well, I guess you could... Shut up! Murderer! <laughs> <laughs> now go and stand over there with the others. Is he dead? Yeah, come to think of it, his ears were bleeding for ages. <laughs> Hush now, my children, as I read him his last rites. <laughs> now, the key to assembling the T55 five five air conditioner <laughs> is to ensure that every nut and every bolt. <laughs> Well, I'm afraid we have no refunds policy, sir. However, I could do you a straight swap. What was it you bartered with? Well, you see, that's the thing. Uh, well, I use my kids. Your kids? <laughs> well, I'm afraid I can't give you those back, sir. I could give you my kids, though. But they're your kids. Why, why would you want to give them away? Well, why did you give yours away? To survive at the low subsistence? I can't say it was easy, but you've got to do what you've got to do. Well, I'm sorry. I mean, your kids have run away. Kids can be very resourceful. My wife is gonna kill me! Lady Luck, she's already dead. What did you say? I said I'm gonna swap it for another item, oh, sir. <laughs> uh, so I need some fuel. Something to make life out there a little bit more bearable. It's alright. I've got this, sir. Right, uh, it's a book all about survival. Okay, what does it recommend? Well, sadly there are only a couple of pages left, but from what I can tell, pre-fall humans tamed wild animals to do domestic chores. That's fascinating. How do you know that? Well, they had these things called bear grills. Presumably, the bears to cook on. How do I tame a bear? Ah, well, glad you asked. I've got the Decimator Mark III. What's, what's this going to do? Ah, oh, well, looks can be very deceiving, sir. That little laser is incredibly powerful. That's, it's useless. Ah, it only works in contact with the skin. Poison at my chest. <coughs> oh, good lord. Even though it's through the fabric. That, that, that's ridiculous. What? No, don't do that. My brother lost a hand that way. Wait, I know your brother. Didn't he lose his, lose his hand trying to give a wall for massage? <laughs> <laughs> I see news that my brother's woodland massage parlour has spread. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely the laser that got his hand. The wolf's just got his genitals, face, nose, and soul. <laughs> <laughs> Could you please just find me something useful? Or a four of accountants. Now, I only usually do this for my best customers, but it could just go round the back. Is that actual bear? Use the decimator! Oh, God, 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 God. Too. You can't keep waving the bear! Shut up, bear! I might just. back to the breakfast show with me, Randy Hotbath. Not that I've had breakfast in a while, but we can keep the dream alive. Be sure to message in, tell me where you think you are, what you think your name is, and how I can get to you. I don't have any resources. I'd just be grateful for the company. My guests later will be a small pile of dirt, a can, and whoever happens to wander in. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, then just step out of your hovel and keep walking. 
in whichever direction you think I might be. I can't help you. I have no idea. Here's some music, I guess. Exactly where we're going. Oh, don't be silly, this always happens. When did our lots get lost? Oh, the time we wanted out the morning by mistake springs to mind. Well. <laughs> and couldn't find a way back. I suppose. And I those piles of sticks. Oh, be fair, they were good sticks. We couldn't even cook them. Oh, agree to disagree. Anyway, we're not lost. Well, if we're so not lost, then why don't you just pull over? We might crash. We're going less than five miles an hour. We might crash really slowly. <laughs> just <laughs>
like spinning and <coughs> wet shit. What? No, you still have <laughs> jobs for me. You can't make me go out there. I'm very sorry. We'll have to leave. Uh, can we take him away, please? No, no, sorry. please. I don't, I don't make the rules. Hi kids, it's Saturday morning and welcome to the Approved Children's Broadcasting Hour, provided by 
our glorious leaders. <laughs> and oh boy, what a show we've got for you today. But first, let's see whose parents haven't been conforming to the strict guidelines of our glorious leaders. <laughs> first, we have Karen, age seven, from sector four. Her mummy has been parked three inches out of our designated zone. Uh oh, Karen, tell your mummy to bid her farewells. <laughs> we also have little Johnny from Mount Shriek, age five. His older brother broke curfew last night by coming home at two minutes past six. Oh dear, he won't be doing that again anytime soon. Not where he's going. Now, let's reinforce our glorious leaders, <coughs> rules and regulations, by showing you the latest episode of Prank Squad. Hey, you crazy cats. Welcome to Prank Squad. I'm here with James, who has told me that his daddy has been eating his lunch too loudly at work and therefore deserves a right good pranking. Yeah, cool. What are we going to do? Well, I think this deserves a particularly special type of prank. Here, take these pliers. We want you to cut your daddy's brick wires. <laughs> Ha ha ha! You said it, buddy! Parang Squad! <laughs> James? What are you doing? I'm gonna be at work in five minutes! Oh dear, James. Looks like the jig is up. What? <laughs> <laughs> ha ha ha! Parang Squad! <laughs> Tune in next week when we'll be dealing with a mother who just can't pay her taxes on time. <laughs> ha ha ha! Parang Squad! <laughs> you see, kids? You see how much easier it is to obey and never question the life lessons of our glorious leaders? Anyway, it's competition time. We asked you to send in your best designs for interballistic nuclear warheads. And oh boy, did you deliver! <laughs> this one from Simon, age four, has a picture of a clown on it. <laughs> so that our enemies can have one last lap as they stare at imminent annihilation. However, our winner this week is little Mikey, aged only three, whose missile releases a die into the air, turning everybody's blood purple. Nice one, Mikey. And your prize is, your uncle will not be liquidated. <laughs> now it's time for the weather. Residents of land beyond the big hill can expect a severe acid shower, as they have done throughout this year. And regular listeners will know that, yes, you guessed it, those showers are fatal. So probably best to say goodbye to your loved ones. If you're living in the mid-region, then well done! Your chances are pretty swell, with only a mild dusting of major pollutants. Just make sure it doesn't get in the food pot! And finally, residents in the southern area need to get out of there! Just get out, for God's sake, run! Run as fast as you possibly can, it's spreading! It'll spread further, but the best thing you can possibly do is run! That's the forecast for the next year. Now for sport. And I still don't know what sport is, but I reckon Manchester Airport have clinched it this year. <laughs> oh god! Oh god, what a stinking fucking waste the earth has become! I had to climb up a mountain of corpses to get here. I've got guts in my shoes. Is anyone there? Can somebody help me? A boy? <coughs> a suffering boy? What is it, my child? I... Can I use your toilet? What the world is a toilet? Oh, and you'd have me go out there, would you? Amongst the corpses? I'll have you know I have a shy bladder. God, it seems like since the world ended, nobody cares about my shy bladder. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cause offence. I, I haven't spoken to another human being in 14, maybe even 15 minutes. Come into the light, boy, where I can see you. Ah, oh, beautiful. A oh, wonderful lad. Wait, no, I, I can't see you at all. I'm still sat down. Ah, oh, oh, my dusty shins, you must forgive me. Let me embrace you, my lad, and bestow upon thee a paternal kiss. Ah, oh, fuck you, God. Fuck you, God. Oh, 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 oh. Please, sir, your face, your body, they repulse me to such an extent that that tiny flame that's been keeping me going for the waste will be ever extinguished if you don't let go! Ha, <laughs> you sound like my ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, we bombed. <laughs> Do you know, I'm the oldest man in all of civilization. 25 years old. Christ, you look 15 times that. What have you been doing? 
allow me to introduce myself. My name's Dr. Casper Adam. And to answer your question why, I've seen horrific things. Things that would make a grown man cry, and do, daily. Like what? The world has ended, Adam. Everything now is innumerable horror. Oh, yeah. I've seen a dog speak in a human voice and tell a blind woman to fuck off. <laughs> I've seen a man cry all of the fluid out of his body and into another man's body. So that, that second man swelled to tremendous size and his own children laughed at him. I've seen rats the size of cats, cats the size of dogs, dogs who appear to be normal size but actually turn out to be two rats working a dog costume to try and get an 18 bit of films at the cinema. The stupid rats, don't they know that dogs of any age? Age aren't allowed in the cinema. <laughs> the horrors, the horrors I've seen. Sorry, I drifted off for a second there. Did you say you'd seen the horrors? Excuse me? The band, the horrors. <laughs> no, Adam. Can we get tickets to see the horrors? They're almost certainly dead. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. Didn't you say you needed the toilet? No, no, I'm enjoying the chat. Are you? Yeah, so how come you stay in here all the time? Don't you fancy getting outside once in a while? I mean, the sunlight's twice as bright and it really, really hurts, but it sure is a pick me up. You see, it's a mix between my dust shins and my horrific guilt. Sit down, I'll spin you in now. No, 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 come on, sit down. Yeah, yeah. Now, years ago, I was a famous scientist. Neil deGrasse Tyson? No, Dr. Casper. Now, I was part of a team of scientists in charge of creating a deadly disease, only to be used when whatever war we were fighting seemed unwinnable. I forget who we were fighting. I was too busy making the disease. We call it the Necropox. Is that a band? Focus, Adam. Yeah. Now, the necropox as well, there was an accident. You see, I was holding a load of coffee, and I accidentally spilled a vial of it into a dog's mouth. Pretty soon it was running away, and I was running after it, but I was still holding all the coffee, so I couldn't run very fast. Pretty soon it had savaged a lollipop lady, and the spread of the necropox had begun. Now the world is ridden with it, and it's all my fault. My God, and you, you just spend your time in here weeping. Yes, I, I yes. could split my time between my weeping and my DJing. <laughs> Do you remember my chart hit? <laughs> but you're responsible for the death of everybody. I can get you a CD if you'd like. It's the last copy of all civilization. People keep sneezing their throat sounds. Yes, we're off that now. We're talking about my DJ. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember it now? Come on, have a dance. I don't want the dance. Yes, you do. Come on, have a dance. Oh, God. Come on, properly. Come on. Come on, oh, on. clap your hands. Clap, clap your hands. Clap, 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 clap your hands. Come on. Okay, now we're going to do some basic steps. Take it back now, you old. One hand this time. Let me root, root, root for the home team. 
Cause if they don't win, it's a shame. Cause it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. <laughs> There's nothing better than fresh air. Fresh, salty, acrid air. <coughs> Tell you what, I could really go for a coffee right now. Uh, we ran out of coffee some few months ago. Hi, can I get a medium? <laughs> and that keeps happening. Over. Anyway, we haven't got any coffee. We don't want to play a brown swill. If by swill you mean the best damn cup of coffee this side of New York, then goddamn I want one. Whatever, if you start to hallucinate, put this bag on your head. <laughs> Whoa there! I want to bind myself on this caffeine goodness. The swill's freezing this week. Yeah, but some swill's <coughs> better than cold swill. That's what my mom always used to say. It doesn't make any sense. Some woman, my mom. You know, I think this could be one of the best coffee shops in Brooklyn. I mean, we need to build the place up a bit. Maybe get a new paint job, hire some new staff, maybe move some of the bodies. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Why is? You still think we're in Brooklyn? Where else would we be? Oh, I don't know, Phil. A wasteland, maybe? A barren nothingness when you humans come to wander out and die? Hey, I know it's been run down a bit recently, but that's no way to talk about my home city. You see, the thing is, Jimmy. My name's Roger. The thing is, Jimmy. <laughs> I've lived in this city for years. It was my father's town, and it was his father's town. But crucially, it wasn't his father's father's town. He lived in Russia, <coughs> but I always dreamed of opening a little coffee shop in a crummy corner of Brooklyn. It's stupid, I guess. I'm a dreamer. Dreamer? You're chronically delusional. I know. It's a beautiful city. <coughs> it's meaty to you. It does a little. What's this? We just gonna protect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we are. No. I once had a very long conversation with my father. I said, listen, Pop, you know that coffee house just off Main Street? I'm gonna own that place one day, and it's gonna be the best damn coffee shop this side of Brooklyn. And he didn't say anything, because he was unconscious. <laughs> but the important thing is, he believed in me. Wait, wait, what was that you just said? He believed in me. All right. And I said to my brother, I said, I'm gonna buy a coffee shop, and he fucking laughs at me. Well, who's laughing now? You can't laugh when you bite to a crisp! <laughs> Can you remember how to laugh? Not really. Should, should we try? Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, good. That's not <laughs> nice. I yeah, like it. Hey, Jim. You got any of those little sugary biscuits we serve on the side? No, no we don't, Phil. We barely have enough supplies to get us through the next month. We have swill, and we have swill, and that's about it. I'll just have my coffee then. Cheers. Oh, that really hits the spot. I really hate working here. <laughs> hey, quit slacking and move these goddamn corpses. You always make them move the corpses. Oh, that's just great. <laughs> Only in New York, baby. <laughs> Tell him what happened next day. I am, tell him. Well, tell him. I am. Tell him that. I will. 
<laughs> anyway, she went in and they took one of her legs. Some of the time she'd come, um, she'd only went in with bloody one in the first place. And she had that second of all. Oh, she did, and that lizard tail. Go into the lizards. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so what do you do for a living? Me and my husband, we're retired, you see. Just go in where the open road takes us. But also try to find our son. Well, I'm, I'm a bounty hunter. A bounty hunter? <laughs> we prefer Snickers no. ourselves, don't we, dear? <laughs> you remind me of my folks back home. Oh, they sound lovely. <laughs> Well, hopefully where I left them, underground. I buried them and I buried my past. Oh, it's a shame you and your parents don't get on, but these things happen, don't they, dear? Such a shame. Yeah, I mean, they do, but... Such a shame. <coughs> Tell me, a strapping young lad such as yourself can't be alone with all these eligible young ladies out there. Well, somewhere, that is. Uh, tell me, is there a Mrs. Bounty Hunter? Sorry, ma'am, the only ladies I need to keep me warm at night are Smith and Wesson. Now, you seem like a man of the world to me. You make me interesting people lately. I had a run in with some mole men the other day. Oh, the mole men, such lovely people. Lovely people. Their customs seem strange at first, but once you get to know them, they're not that different to you or me. They hunger for human flesh. Don't be so intolerant. <coughs> you smack every stranger you meet. Well, so far, yes, but just because I can't find my son doesn't mean I stop being a parent. You can let me out here. Oh, all right. You all right? Yeah, no, I'll be fine, sir. You look colder. Do you want to jump on? No, 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 ma'am, that'll be fine. You just have a pleasant trip. Oh, before you go, um, if you see my son, will you let me know? Can do, ma'am. How much for his head? <laughs> oh, you're always getting the wrong end of the stick, you. He thinks you wanted to kill our son. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, dear me, no. Don't kill him. Get out, go. I don't want to see no, you no, again. No, 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 please. No, please. 
Yeah, yeah, I do. Sorry, I'm gonna be late. No, listen, I, I know I missed the piano is Yeah, okay. Yes, I'll see you later. Customs and Immigration, how can we help you along with your journey today? Please, let me through. I will have to ask my colleague, Brian, is the gate open? No, it is paperwork anyway. <laughs> of course, brain like a sieve I have. <laughs> well, my golden poppy, you can't deny the importance of paperwork. Have you got your passport? Uh, yeah, listen, uh, I left it on the bus when the bus tried to, tried to eat me. <laughs> In fairness, we do get that a lot. Alright, because we get it a lot, we are going to let you through. You just have to pass the mail to take Thank you, thank you so much. Through here, please. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. That noise my colleague is making means you were failing. You don't understand it. We understand just fine, sir. Please settle down. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> you got anything to declare? Uh, got this weapon of sorts. Oh no, we can't be having that, sir. You can take someone's eye out with that. Um, got this last remaining photo of my family. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir, this is going to have to be impounded. Uh, okay, I guess the only thing I've got left is this the antidote to the necropox. <laughs> you can't take that through, will you? Why not? It's a liquid. You're going to have to drink it or leave it here. But I can't do that. This is I'm sure they sell something similar on the other side, sir. Foreign countries do sell basic fluids, you know, shampoos, etc. <laughs> Please, you don't understand that this can save everybody. If you really want, I can raise this with my suit here. Kevin, Kevin, can you come in here, please? <laughs> now, Kevin, this ambitious young man says he has the cure for the necropox. Too much, Kevin. It's just so wise. Right. <laughs> my superior has told me that we can let you. Thank you, thank you so much. Listen, I'm looking for this woman. Can you, can you please see, tell me if you've seen her? I'm sorry, sir, we don't have time for this. You're holding the whole queue up. <laughs> please, I'm really desperate. Do you know where she is? <coughs> Yeah, she was heading to a place called... Uh, <laughs> that's it, Kevin. Rainbow's End. Are you absolutely sure? Yeah, positive. Come on, I'll show them that. Hello, sir. Hi. How may I help you, sir? Well, I'm in a bit of a rush, actually. Okay, just please sign here. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. My colleague has just informed me that it is now past five o'clock, so I'm afraid we're going to have to continue this tomorrow. No, no you don't understand. He'd be sending me to my death. There's, there's a horde of marauders after me. Well, that can keep up like the rest of you tomorrow. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, really is a big horde. <laughs> it's going to be one hell of a day tomorrow. Uh, uh, pint? Presumably an ancient earth deity, 
Ooh, all those spaces arranged in the rubble. Oh, well, it's a temple. And the smaller room, we believe to have been in the waiting area, or the larger room, we think contains sacred artifacts that mortals will not allowed to see. <laughs> On you go, driver. <laughs> this is all be ridiculous. Sir, please keep your hands and legs inside the ground at all times. You could lose one. But we haven't been moving anywhere. <laughs> haven't we? Or could you use your imagination? <laughs> Whenever I try and use my imagination, I just start sweating profusely. And then my knee starts to shake, and I get this horrible feeling that I picture the open road and know deep down one day I'll own a real bus. <laughs> Stop that fact number two. To your right, you will see the colony's public slop trough. Wow, you're a centrally allocated food. Oh, what a luxury. Oh, actually, madam, that's a female colony. Uh, slop is mainly, well, we don't actually know, but whatever it is, it isn't good for you. <laughs> the mayor actually made the very wise decision of filling the colony with scorpions. You know. What? That's horrible! Oh, it's not that bad. It fills up as a games room for kids on Tuesdays. You see, the way the little beasties are with the kids, I mean, don't get me wrong, there are some horrific injuries. But, you know, when they're not devouring the kids, they've really got a lovely temperament. It makes me wish I hadn't lost my son. <laughs> oh, he's not dead or anything. No, um, we just lost hide and seek. This game's been over 12 years now. <laughs> I think you need to go. Yes! Hide and seek. Thanks for asking. Fact <laughs> <laughs> number three. No, that's it. I've had enough. Sir, please control yourself. Stop the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, you could have been seriously injured standing up in a moving vehicle like that. But we haven't been moving. We stayed exactly where we are. We have been on a very extensive tour. Oh, uh, well, give it up, Sheila. We're not moving. We've never been moving. Don't be silly. I mean, this is the most popular tour company in, in the whole of everywhere. I mean, people come from miles around. And you know what? We'll get that Channel 4 show commission. That's what we'll do. That'll get us back on the map. We've just been sat here. That's all this has ever been. I'm sorry. Uh, you're right. I, I must seem so foolish to uh, well, well, kind of. Uh, but... <laughs> I guess I was enjoying it in a way. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These scorpions, are they big or really big? One more time, I suppose. Oh, thank you. Now, to your right is the colony acid plate where we store all of the acid. Can we go diving in it? Oh, sure. You just need to purchase one of our number of comfortable diving suits. Do the kids steal them? Uh, Sure. <laughs> now it's time for our regular feature, the Mobile Lottery. This is part of the show where I dial a random number and see if the person on the other end wants to talk to me. <laughs> Last week we spoke to John and our thoughts are with his loved ones. <laughs> Congratulations, listener, you've won the Mobile Lottery! Hello! Hello there! And where are you from? I'm from Scotland! <laughs> oh! That's a lovely part of wherever it is that we are. Oh, I'm sorry. I think we're getting another caller in. Hello there! I'm from Wales! <laughs> so you clearly are. <laughs> oh yes, I listen every week. Well that's just super. And you are by far the best radio host in the entire world. <laughs> well, that's it. Oh, shit. Well, 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 it's very kind of you. Uh, thank you very much. Coming up next, water. Where's it all gone? <laughs> <laughs> duty to answer any questions or problems that you, my people, may have. Don't be afraid to open up a can of worms. It's no problem I'm not going to solve. We're out of worms. That's on the agenda. <laughs> well, worms or no, on with the questions. Yes, you with the grotesque deformities. Uh, hi, um, long time survivor, first time complainer. Uh, <laughs> why does water glow? I don't know, but I assume it's 
that's incredibly helpful. I don't think it is. It's, it speaks. <laughs> it's probably just trying to make friends. The water's being bullied, though. It, it just calls me a dick. And I can't get to sleep. I think you should appreciate the water's honesty. And as for you, look on the bright side. Now you don't need to buy a nightlight. But it's always night here. That is true. I should probably have just said the light. <laughs> Any more questions? Uh, yeah, hi. The rats are bigger than my children. Get bigger children. <laughs> Next. <laughs> I really don't think your addressing girl concerns Mr. Mayor. How dare you? As mayor, I always try and do what's best for my people. But you took all our money. You would have only spent it on rubbish. That's all we've got to eat! That's <laughs> other questions. Wait, this is ridiculous. We've been waiting two hours for this. You show up, you, don't, you treat our concerns like they don't matter at all. Right. See, the problem here is I don't really want to listen to you. So I'm just going to start humming to drown out the sounds of your horrible voices. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mayor, this is ridiculous. Uh, this is absurd. Uh, 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 do it! What's that? I'm doing a great job! I agree! <laughs> you are a terrible man. Is that them saying I'm brilliant? Yeah, I think they're also saying you've got teeth. <coughs> You're paid to say that. That's not true. I don't pay him. Don't you? What are you complaining about? Most people would pull their own knuckles out just to work for me for a week. Yeah. Oh, sugar snaps! <laughs> Why does everything I treat with no respect at all leave me? Boo to everything in general! I like the way this guy thinks! Thank you. you see what I mean? You're no good. You don't even have any policies. I mean, what are your thoughts on immigration, education, healthcare, finance? Go away! <laughs> no! I can't be the end of this. Yes, I can. I'm the mayor. I don't remember how did you even get elected? How did you become the mayor? I found this sign. <laughs> Why does it say Hellman's mayor? <laughs> because it was bestowed on me by the Hellman. Essentially <laughs> makes me the most dangerous man on the planet. <laughs> Is that true? Probably. Where did you get it? I stole it from a baby. By which I mean. I just found it lying around. Did you steal food from an infant? That's what they want you to think. Who? The babies. <laughs> Self-righteous little bastards. You can't call babies bastards. Oh, no, I can. You see, I'm much stronger than a baby. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely take one in the I don't think you're helping your case, Mr. Mayor. Oh, have you executed? Or at the very least, I'll punch you in the esophagus? No, you can't do that. Yes, I can. Why else would anyone be mad? Feelings of moral obligation. <laughs> so whimsical. Oh, you remind me of me when I was your age. Except stupider. And you smell of rotten shit. <laughs> anyway, guards take Dean to the dungeon. Uh, we don't have any guards, Mr. Mayor. And uh, we don't have any dungeons either. But what about the big dogs we have? Delicious, Mr. Mayor. Stop! Stop your petty bickering! <laughs> I have claimship to the mayoralty of this colony. Observe! <laughs> <laughs> it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen! It's making my eyes pregnant! It's a jar! That's right! It's a jar! You are deposed, mayor. <laughs> now, to celebrate my ascendancy, let us all join in a belly laugh! <laughs> ah! <laughs> practicing and eventually we'll get it. That's five more letters than Hellman's mare. I'm done. Displayed. Like a sandwich bag full of broken dreams. <laughs> Tell me, how did you come across such a prized jewel? It's a funny story actually. It was given to me by a passing baby. Damn! <laughs> I knew he'd find me eventually. <laughs> Turns out stealing things from babies is wrong. <laughs> new man! New man! New man! New man! <laughs> Doesn't look good. 
I've been having a look at your charts and you've got a very serious condition. Something we wouldn't want spreading to the rest of the colony. There's nothing wrong with me, I'm fine. No, you're, you're very seriously ill. I think we need to book you in for some fairly invasive procedures. <coughs> what are you talking about? Oh, it's just some medical experimentation. I don't want to be experimented on. Of course you want to be experimented on. Besides, even if you disagreed with me, you couldn't. Because who, who's the doctor here? Well, you are. But... Oh, right! I am! So you couldn't possibly disagree with anything I have to say. I don't want to be experimented on, please. Everybody wants to be experimented on. <laughs> it's a medical fact. Besides, you put in your application form that you like just having a go at things. Well, I don't want this. I don't want this. There's nothing wrong with me. Oh, right. Well, do you never feel like any of those organs you've got are just weighing you down a bit? <laughs> Not really, no. Well, you know, if the appendix is in use for sort then maybe they all are! <laughs> <laughs> what? Do you disagree with me? Well, you can't. I'm too educated. No, oh, come on, be fair. Uh, uh, should we add delirium to your symptoms? No, 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 no. There's nothing wrong. I'm fine. Please don't do this. Listen, we all hurt sometimes. If it be because we're having a needle prodded deep into our head, <laughs> <coughs> or if it just appeared that we couldn't see the whole picture. Oh. Oh, God. Oh, listen, it's not what you think it is. I didn't know she was your wife. She's called Mrs. Doctor! She could have been anyone's wife! Whose wife did you think she was? I don't know. Please, please don't do this to me. Don't give this! I'm so no, sorry! No, no, get out! I never want to see your face again! God. Yeah, hi, Carol. There is something... No? No, it can wait. Yes, yes, I'll remember your cereal again. Okay. Yeah, hi, Sandra. Yeah, yeah. G guy I just let out, yeah. Can we put him put, can, can, can we put him in for emergency head dissection? <laughs> Cracking bag. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> The fact that 
that you've managed to get any at all is astounding. We, we put an Alan for fuel just last week. I'm not even sure that was his name. Now, so the lot of old fogies getting away with you and your friends. We're completely alone here, you know that. Well, oh, no, we've got another person. Go and get oh. it. Here we go. Now, I hope you like it. We've got one just the same, haven't we, love? Yeah. I have no conception of what this is at all. On. It's a sandwich toaster. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's great. You can you can toast sandwiches with it. Yeah. And, uh, and you can toast sandwiches with it. <laughs> and that's all I can think of. But clever than like you, you're the <laughs> I, I don't suppose you've got any sandwiches for me to toast. Oh, well, I didn't want to because I don't know what feelings you like. And I wouldn't want you not to like it. Uh, I guess I can understand. Do you want some swill? Oh no, we had our swill before we came. <laughs> Shall we be getting a move on, dear? Oh no, dear, let's stay and see George. No, well, we're seeing him now. He's probably very busy. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Please, please stay. Please. No, no, your father's right. We wouldn't want to come between you and your friends. <laughs> but don't hesitate to call us if you need anything. I, I need company. I need my mum and dad. Please, please, you need to stay with me. Come on. Now, son, you're not going to make any friends with those old fogies hanging around. No. Let's get going, dear. We'll see you at Christmas, son. Bye, son. I don't know if I'll last the week. Take care, son. I love you, Dad. No, oh, you big softy. <laughs> now, away with you. Me, me and your mum are going to get head start on the traffic. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Oh, didn't he know that well? Oh, well, that's all right. Oh, well, that's all right. Father, <laughs> the chocolate fountainhead, and fantastic Mr. Chocks. 
I see. <laughs> <laughs> Scum. tonight and he's been really great so and thank you all for coming uh, you've been a fantastic audience thank you very much and good night <laughs>